Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome here this morning. Just give you an update on where we are with the, the mines fire. Um, progressing, we are progressing extremely well. Uh, our strategies are, are in place and working effectively with uh, five priorities in order. Our first priority is the safety of our personnel on site and uh, mines personnel and the community. Our second priority is uh, the protection of critical infrastructure within the mine and there's been some very good work done in relation to the water management which we'll talk about in a moment. Our third priority is to secure the northern batters of the mine um, and we are progressing very well across the, from west to east along, across those batters and then we'll move into the southern batters uh, and progressively work down, down the length of the southern batters. We've got a couple of problem areas in there that we're dealing with that's still putting up a fair amount of smoke for the community. So that's a priority for us, is to deal with those first. So uh, we've got uh, crews from all over Australia working with us now. We've got the Aviation Fire Service with their tenders. We've also got uh, the uh, Queensland Fire Service, Tasmanian Fire Service and New South Wales Fire Service providing us with specialist uh, compressed air foam units, working with our ground crews uh, on, the, on the front line, doing an excellent job, now working in teams, and these teams are a part of our overall strategy. Are we allowed to ask questions? Or? Do you want to speak first, Luke? Or do you want us to keep going? Uh, that's well, entirely up to you. T tell us about tomorrow, what you're expecting um, into the afternoon and evening, and, and also Friday. Um, are we looking at a similar situation to last Tuesday? We are on Wednesday. Um, we will, we've got some weather coming in overnight Tuesday, which will uh, move in across our area, the area of the mines on Wednesday morning. Um, so we could have a, a very similar scenario to last Tuesday, but as, as we did last Tuesday, we're actually preparing for that. Uh, today we are planning. Uh, we're planning the resources that are required for us to have on standby. Uh, we're we're endeavouring to bring in additional uh, medium Halitech aircraft, uh, two of, uh, for tomorrow, uh, sorry, for Wednesday, um, just to give us that additional aerial support. And we'll bring in additional grand, ground crews and have them on standby to protect any of the infrastructure outside the mine. So we'll go through exactly the same process as we did last Tuesday. We were successful then, and hope, but hopefully we won't need to, to do that. Uh, the issue for us on the Wednesday will be the wind. Uh, the, the wind change, if it mixes down as predicted, will give us some grief in the mind, so uh, we, we can only be prepared for that. Can you give us a few statistics, like how much is it reduced in size by, how deep is it burning, that kind of thing? Um, look, uh, the, the depth of burning across the mine uh, is virtually surface depth. Um, it, uh, it ranges from, you know, uh, anywhere from on the surface to, you know, um, half a metre. Um, we've, our teams are working across the batters in a, in a methodical manner. Uh, we put the aircraft tenders in first to wash that uh, batter down and cool it slightly. Then we put the, uh, the CAFS foam or the compressed air foam over that and then we have crews come up behind that to blacken that out in depth and continue to patrol those areas and that's, that's been uh, working very effectively. You, you mentioned two problem areas, can you tell us a bit, a bit about where they are, how problematic they are? And perhaps how big they are? Yeah, we've, we've got a very hot area in the uh, eastern end of the northern batter, which we're working on. That's, that's our main priority, as I said, uh, um, the, the, to secure the northern, northern batters in depth is, is, is our, uh, on the top of our agenda. Um, as we move round into the southern batters, uh, uh, on the, um, about the middle it is, uh, right on the bend uh, in, the, in that um, southern edge, uh, there is... Um, there's actually a very hot spot there at which our people are excluded from entering. It's a no-go zone for our people and it's been burning fairly freely now, Luke, for, uh, for some time. Uh, but we are today putting in a strategy of how we will deal with that. Um, we have to remove some uh, debris and infrastructure in that area to allow our, our people to access it safely. We won't let our people go there until it's safe. Once that's removed, we will work with mines to put uh, access in around that area and then we'll concentrate on that with both monitors, ground crews and water bombing to cool it off. Uh, and once we cool it off, we can then move the tankers, uh, sorry, the aerial appliances and the CAPS units in to deal with it. But at the moment, uh, it's still very hot but, uh, and it's putting up a fair bit of uh, smoke and heat. So, uh, but uh, we will move to it as we move uh, over the next couple of days. We'll get on to that. Is it the case that the debris shouldn't have been there in the first place? Oh look, you'll, I'll have to refer that to Luke. It's a part of the mining process, 
So I think it's a part of the old mine infrastructure? Or yeah. Well, uh, before I uh, start the interview or uh, uh, answer any questions, uh, let me just say that we as a GDF Suez uh, Hazelwood, that we really sympathize and acknowledge the problems the people of Malawi are encountering today. Uh, we consider Hazelwood as part of the community. We have been there for a long time and uh, we, we, we feel uh, really uh, uh, deeply sympathized with it the people of Mola, like I said. Uh, coming back to your question, um, it's important to know that a mine is a going concern. So once you, while you start digging, you also clean up uh, the areas you left behind. So this is part of the rehabilitation program. So we have a rehabilitation program in place uh, that is approved by uh, various regulations. So this is just work in progress while we dig uh, further uh, removing fuel out of the mine to burn in the power station. We've heard allegations that the company has sold off part of their sprinkler systems and other infrastructure that could be used to fight fires. Has that material and equipment been sold? That's uh, incorrect. So what happens if, you, like I said, uh, mining is a going concern. So you do a rehabilitation while you uh, dig coal. So part of the areas that are, that are already rehabilitated, like the northern batteries, part of the northern batteries, we have removed the old sprinkler systems because otherwise you can't rehabilitate. So we remove old pipes, we remove old infrastructure the moment we do rehabilitation. So that's what happened, and that's what continues to happen. Is there any indication there was already a fire in the pit before the bushfire started? No, not that I'm aware of. So uh, uh, that day was a very particular day, that Sunday. Um, as you might recall, on Friday there was already uh, some fires mentioned, so we had people on alert. So we didn't have any fire anywhere in the mine. Um, on Sunday, we had two sources that came up at the same time. Look, is there anything that could have been done to have prevented this fire from starting covering up the coal, things like that? Well, like I said, uh, mining is a going concern. Rehabilitation is part of your mining process. So we continue to rehabilitate according to the progress in the mine. And this has been under uh, approval from our regulatory officers. Was the state government regularly auditing your fire prevention plan? Correct. So there's an annual uh, review of our fire uh, preparedness program. So it's done by uh, various regulations. So we have that in place. It's been audited. We audited ourselves as well because we have to make sure that we have safe working environment, of course. Is there anything GDF Sewers could have done to prevent this fire from occurring? Well, we have all our mitigation plan in place. And the moment we had these uh, two fire spots in the mine, the, fire, the, the, the mitigation plan kicked in. This is not something that we lighted. This was probably this an arsonist, like, like in the media, that uh, lighted this fire somewhere. So we had just sparks coming into the mine and then we started firing it. Tell, well, oh, Tell us about the company's decision not to attend any of the, the community meetings, um, briefings, things like that over the past three weeks. Um, I think that's not entirely correct. We had a number of interviews that were conducted in the first week. In the second week, we put out a number of publications in the local newspapers to inform people what's going on. Uh, and we, so we have been actively uh, talking to uh, people. Also yesterday the question was asked, why didn't you attend uh, the, the protest meeting? We spoke with the uh, organizer. Organizer advised us not to be there. Now the nature of that meeting yesterday changed because it was a protest meeting with a change to a community meeting. If we would have known that, most probably, we would have been there. What sort of a cost is this coming at for international power? How much is this fire costing? Well, I'm going to reply in a different way. We're focusing on getting extingu or extinguishing the fire together with the uh, fire authorities, which are our main focus. Once the fire is out, we will do an investigation, our own investigation. There might be an inquiry from the state as well. Once that comes out, we'll see what happens. But today, our focus is on extinguishing the fire. We have to get relief in for the people of Moral, and we're doing that, I think, very successful with the uh, fire authorities. Luke, some local residents want compensation. Will the company provide any? Uh, like I said, Hazelwood has been part of the community. We call, we call it our community. We've always been very supportive of the Mola community. Once we can uh, change the focus from extinguishing the fire, we will com continue supporting the community like we did before. But is specific compensation for this fire on the cards? The focus is on extinguishing the fire. We have been very supportive for the uh, Mola community over all the years that Hazelwood is there. We will continue to do so once we can get the focus of the fire. So does that mean you're ruling out any specific compensation? The focus is on extinguishing the fire. We've been very supportive for the Mola community over all the years. We'll continue to do so once we can uh, get the focus back or focus off the fire. So are you talking about compensation? Again, like I said, the focus is on extinguishing the fire. 
We have been very supportive for the media, for the, sorry, the media, sorry, for the community over all the years. We'll continue to do so once the fight is out. Can, can you tell us just a bit more about your feelings, you know, for the community? You expressed quite a bit of sympathy early on. Well, it's 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 of course, if you have to live in that smoke, that's not uh, not easy. And that's why we have a strategy in place with the fire authorities. We are handling the northern batters first because that's causing most grief in the, in the local community. We're fighting that and I think very successful, uh, like uh, Barry already said, sorry, Bob already said. Um, uh, that's very successful. We're preparing for the, the, for the coming Wednesday to make sure that uh, things are not getting out of hand again. But uh, again, focus is on getting the fire out. This will give the most relief uh, for the community. Bob, can I ask you, is there any indication that there was a fire in the pit before that bushfire came through? It's certainly not to my knowledge. We keep receiving calls from your firefighters saying that there was. Look, I, I, uh, this is my second tour of duty into the mine. Uh, I came uh, uh, in last week. Uh, the fire started some time before that. I'm not across the um, detail of the, uh, the, the initial cause and the initial fire uh, within the mine, so I certainly can't comment on that. Can I go back to Luke with a question? There's been an enormous um, focus on bushfire preparations, you mm -hmm. know, communities, individuals, families, etc. over the last, particularly the last five years, as we all know. Are you comfortable that your company was well prepared enough for that day and, that, and, and the fire that eventually eventuated? Of course we are. And let me put it back in a different way. Hazwood supplies 25% of the energy need of Victoria. If you don't do that in a serious way, how can you do this? So we have all the fire mitigation programs in place. They have been audited. There is an annual review. So of course we are. We are having a very safe working environment for our people and a safe environment for the community. And there'll be, it sounds like there'll be multiple inquiries. You're comfortable about fronting them? Your, your, of course. Your company is comfortable about of course. appearing, providing we, all the information? We have, we have nothing to hide and, and we will work through with uh, any inquiry that is uh, required from us. Deputy Premier Peter Ryan says that the state government is in talks with duty of sewers uh, about GDF sewers contributing to, to paying for some of the firefighting efforts. Um, can you uh, give us an update on those talks? Well, from a GDF sewers as a perspective, we are focusing on extinguishing the fire. There will be an inquiry, investigation afterwards. We'll pull lessons out of that and we'll see what comes of it. Today, this is like a little bit speculation. Let's focus on the thing that's at hand, extinguishing the fire getting a relief into the for the people of Mala. It is costing an extraordinary amount. Are you surprised by how angry the community is at the company? I can understand that it costs a lot of grief in Mala. That's why we say we sympathise with, uh, with the community, with our community. Um, and that's why we focus on getting the fire out and we have that strategy in place to get the, the fire in the northern batteries out, to get that relief into Mala. But to expect the community in Victoria as a whole to pay for that? Again, the focus on extinguishing the fire. It's going to get the most benefit to the Mola community having that fire out. We'll ha we will have an inquiry afterwards, we will have an investigation, we'll see what comes out of that. But let us focus on the task at hand, is extinguishing the fire. And how long do you think that will take? How long do you think it will take to well, extinguish that's, everything? In that's maybe more for the local fire authority or for the fire authority. But what I want to say is it's a very complex issue. As you can, as you can see on the drawings, we have multiple fires. It also started in a very complex environment on the day itself because there were multiple fires around the mine as well. Um, so it's very difficult to pinpoint to say this is the date we're going to extinguish everything. But maybe Bob is better placed to answer that question than I do. In relation to how long we'll be fighting this fire, uh, uh, we can't give an accurate estimation of how long it'll take. Uh, it's very dependent on, on weather. As I said, we're moving into uh, difficult weather again on Wednesday. Uh, that could see a setback in the mines. Um, uh, where hopefully we'll have the northern batters secured to the point where there'll be minimal impact on the weather on that. But the weather will certainly impact on the southern batters uh, as we move into Wednesday, as per the predicted weather. So that might that might take us back a step, but we are continuing to move forward. That's the progressive thing about this. If you look at the, the line scans that we do every night and you look at our FLIR, our forward-looking infrared aircraft flights that, uh, that cover this uh, area several times a day, every time we, we take that view, there is, an, there is a definite improvement. So. Look, I've said this before, it's like eating an elephant. It's a little bit at a time. It really is. It's, it, and, and that's putting it in the simplest terms. And, uh, and we're, we're just taking those little bites every day, but in time, we'll eat the elephant. The, the elephant off hotspot in mm. the eastern side of the northern batters, how, how big is it? And how close is it to the town? I, I'm guessing it might be that one. No, no, that's the northern batters. 
Yeah. We're talking the southern batters. No, whether you mentioned those on the northeastern batter. Yes, you can see it in the red. Yep. There on the map. That one. No, further over. Right. To the eastern end of the northern batters. There, where your finger is now. Yeah. No, further over. Red. Good there, right, right there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So and how, we, how big is that, that bold red one? <coughs> and how well, close is how big is it? It takes each one of those units, there are 100 metres in size. So if you if you if you in in length it's linear measurement um, so and that goes up the face of the batter so if you're looking at that there's about 400 metres there of batter in that hot spot we'll continue to focus on that that's we're moving we're moving to those areas now we have to cool down as we go to allow our people to get in there safely um, the other aspect of this there is still ash and debris falling down from the batters. The mines people have to clear that to give us access into that areas. So there are a number of safety issues for our people. So again, it's slowly, slowly. We need to be make sure that there, there is every a aspect of safety considered. And that's been extensive through this whole operation. If you have a look at the health monitoring that we've put in place for our people, if you look at the welfare that we've put in, our place, in place for our people, relieving our people off the line every two hours so they can recuperate from the very difficult work that they're engaged in. Um, our main consideration is for them. Uh, we, get, we get that out of the road, we will then deal with the critical infrastructure that we're doing, and there is some critical infrastructure in all these key areas that we've, we're concentrating on. We'll make sure that's correct, and, uh, and we look after that, because that, that really hinges Luke, doesn't it, that uh, if we lose that critical inf uh, infrastructure, then it affects our firefighting operations dramatically. How's the mine holding up? Um, there were some concerns about its integrity. Last one. We have our uh, own independent geotechs working with the mines geotechs uh, and all indications to us is the, the, the mine is operating normally. There, are, there is some cracking that appears from time to time. Uh, that is a normal process within the mine uh, and we're dealing with that. The stability of the water in the mine is a normal process within the mine but it puts some limitations on us as a fire, station, uh, fire service. It's water in, water out. Uh, in relation to, to, to water management. Um, we are putting in additional pumps today and uh, over 4.7 kilometres of, of pipeline that's going in to take more water out of the mine, which will allow us to put more water into the mine in suppression activities. Guys, I'll make this the last question, yeah. please. So, oh, sorry, yeah. so it's a very balanced approach. And I've got to say, the, um, the mines people are working directly with us um, we have a strategic meeting every day where we sit down and discuss the, str the strategy for the next 24 hours and we're working hand in hand to make sure we're in partnership to overcome this problem. Just one more question Last for Luke. Question. Um, could you tell us, I suppose we've spoken a lot about the community, how are the workers holding up in the mine? Have you had any concerns from them, people not wanting to come to work in the mine, things like that? No, I have to say a full admiration for uh, all our people, for the fire authorities. They've been working around the clock 24 hours doing the best they can, putting it in an enormous effort. It's, it's really fantastic what people are doing. So I can only congratulate them on all the work they're doing.